What's up, everybody? It's the Hardy Construction. You can find us at hardyconstruction.tumblr.com, youtube.com slash hardyconstruction, as well as facebook.com slash the Hardy Construction with Yos Comp, and Mother Approved. Today's film is <laughs> Ginger Dead Man uh, 2005. Oof, uh, Ginger Dead Man 2005, <laughs> directed by Charles Band, written by William Butler, who did the story as uh, well as Do- Dominic Muir, starring Gary Busey, Robin Sidney, and Ryan Locke. Um, an evil yet adorable gingerbread man comes to life with the soul of a convicted killer. This real-life cookie monster wreaks havoc on the girl who sent the killer to the electric chair. Oof, Jesus West. Isn't this a great movie? Why'd you Why'd you do this to me? You know I don't <laughs> listen. You know, Actually, the reason I did this to you is because you chose that that live action um, Devil Man, and it was so upsetting that I I felt the need to pay you back. But I mean, that's to the extreme. That's like that's like if I had slapped you and then you threw uh you actually kicked a a, a, a like a brick from a building and the whole <laughs> building fell on me because this is a horrible no movie. i actually feel like devil man was worse than this this <laughs> okay, was enjoyable to me i enough. enjoyed this the actor gary Busey should change his name to gary abusey because i felt abused after oh, i watched this oh. movie thank you um yes this is charles band uh i felt sort of i feel sort of bad about what i'm about to say because I was watching, uh, I, I looked at the Twitter of the main actress from the film and Charles Brand is on. And I, I guess she works for him uh, as besides being in 50 more of these fucking Ginger Dead evil bong movies. She was, yeah, she was an evil she, bong. Uh, I, guess, I think she worked like the uh, their um, tables at comic conventions. But anyway, let me just say what I want to say. Uh, it's horrible, horrible, horrible movies. <laughs> these fucking horrible mm-hmm. movies. I can't stand them. I can't stand Full mo- full uh, moon, uh, none of that shit. I don't know what it is, because obviously mm-hmm. there's a, there's a love for the material, there's a love for horror, so I'll give them that. I can't stand right. it. I want to jump out of a fucking window when I see anything that has to do with fucking Puppet Master or Charles Band or anything. The shit. first Puppet Master was a good movie. No, get out of here, man. Listen. No, it was. <laughs> it was. <laughs> It was. it was a movie with, it was fucking with fun, puppets. Man. You know what was good about that movie? The stop motion animation. That was fantastic. And the character designs. This, no, is, the, this is the thing that was, Charles Band it does. It was just fun. It was fun. You know what it is? Charles Band knows what to do. He knows uh, how, how the character should be designed. He knows how they this should is, be animated. This movie is literally like a subpar Chucky starring worse actors and like really bad so here's the thing i feel bad about it because i went on it onto the twitter i was trying to look up the main actress robin sydney because she's a very pretty girl and she's She's probably uh, the best actor in the movie yes and she's she's um uh personable enough like you know you 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 like her Uh, you know when an actor exudes some sort of charm on film no matter what piece of shit they're in and yeah. um, yeah, I yeah I saw her and I was like, oh, she's she seems like a nice, especially the also the Latina girl that's in the film. Um, what is her name? Uh, I can't find her name. Right Lorna now. Dean. No. Oh no no Hispanic. no. The, uh, her Spanish. assistant lady. Hispanic. Right. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. right here. Um, what is her Betty? Name? It's not I Betty. Think it was... Betty oh, is no, the mother's the name, mom. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're supposed to be like Betty Crocker and Sarah Lee. Ha ha ha. Get it. It's Julia, uh, is her friend Daniela Melgoza, who I think stopped acting around 2007 or something. Also, the mother, Betty, uh, passed away in 2016 of cancer, so that's very sad, so I don't goof on her too much. That is sad, but the other one, it's probably for the better that she quit acting. No, but yeah, but yeah, but um, p- thank God that the lady who played the mother was actually in two other, a couple of other films before she passed away, so this wasn't her last film. But um, Wait, Is she a good actress? <laughs> I don't know. She was in some pretty, like... She was in uh, some uh, uh, movies in the seventies that I think were pretty well known. Now, with. now, with Gary Busey, do you think that he was acting, or do you think he was just? <laughs> do you think they just put him? I in don't a think room? he knew there was a camera there. I think he was really trying to kill people at a diner. Um, <laughs> Gary Busey. Uh, the movie is sold as a Gary Busey film, and this he's is in like, like ten seconds. And you know what? For the ten seconds he's in, he's fantastic in it. Because he's like, yeah. even if he's a bad actor, he's a good bad actor. Listen, I like, I, I don't watch Gary Busey films, but I like Gary Busey. N- not because yeah, he's of... F- he's a fucking nuts. I yeah, love him. Not because of, like, I, I can't explain it. Like, if you've, if you've ever seen a Gary Busey movie where he's kind of playing, well, like, where he's playing a wacky person. Obviously, every movie he's played is a fucking whack job. But, like, my favorite Gary Busey movie that he was in was Point Break. 
he was like the fu- he was so fucking good in that movie because get Point Break is like a perfect like summer action film starring Keanu Reeves and Patrick um, Swayze. Patrick Swayze, and yeah. uh, he plays like um because that movie's about Keanu Reeves going undercover and he's playing his his um his his partner like an undercover partner, and there's a part where he's. Right. He's hungry. <laughs> I, I'm trying to paraphrase it because I don't remember what he really says. He, he tells Keanu Reeves to order like a meatball sub. And I think he says, I can eat the balls off a dead rhinoceros. And I know somebody else wrote that line, but it's just his, you know, the way he acted. And it was so, uh, he's good. He was just funny in that movie. Yeah. Anyway, but I, I first know, saw him, I think, in uh, Lethal Weapon, like as a kid. Yeah, he was like, but he was like an evil bastard. I don't know if he, apparently he got into a car accident. Or a motorcycle and he has, accident. Like, brain damage, yeah, he had yeah. brain damage, which screwed up his mind. Obviously, uh, you can see it when he did interviews with Howard Stern, where he like attacks Howard Stern, but in a playful manner. But Howard Stern probably pissed his pants, and uh, like he got, I think he was, um, I'm not sure, was it? Uh, he was nominated for um, uh, playing Buddy Holly in the Buddy Holly story. He essentially looked just like Buddy Holly. And uh, he Buddy got, Holly must have been a very ugly man. He got he got nominated for the, but I think that might be his face. How he no, he sort of stayed. He sort of looked the same. Um, I'm saying Carrie Busey looked the same since youth to now. And his son is Jake Busey, obviously the guy from what uh, the, hell? the fucking uh, the bug Starship one. Troopers. He plays the, Starship Troopers. He yeah. plays the violin, the electric violin, and then also he blows himself up in contact. Uh, spoiler alert. Um, yeah. So he okay. So this is something from Gary Busey's trivia on his IMDb. Uh, he <laughs> nearly died of head. In- I'm not laughing at this. I was laughing at something else. Nearly died of head injuries in a motorcycle <laughs> accident in December 1988. So that's what happened. Um, so that's essentially where the turn went. And he was for some reason he just dis- maybe it was the, the the bang on his. I head, think he maybe. was always kind of crazy though, right? Could be. I mean, you never know. Um, so that's nuts. Anyway, he was all. Also, he was an awesome bad guy in Under Siege. That's another underrated awesome movie. Oh, it's okay. Like, is that is he the one that gets his ears blown out when they turn on that fucking? They like turn on the speakers on the. Oh, no, is that movie? Something? Yeah, Steve. You know why we were talking about this other shit? Because the movie's only an hour, an hour and like five minutes, so we can kind of bullshit around with Gary Busey, the history of Gary Busey. But that movie was so good because. Steven Seagal is probably in a handful of, probably not even a handful, maybe three good movies he's ever been in, which was Under I would agree. Siege. I would agree with that statement. Under Siege, Above the Law, and Out for Justice. What's the one where he's in a coma, and then he wakes I, I up think, out of the I coma? I think that's Above hard the Law. Hard to Kill, I, I think. Hard or is to that, Kill, no, that's, right. Um, no, no, it might be a hard, it is Hard to Kill, I think, because I, I was thinking about that movie today, actually, because I think that was his first movie he ever did. Or you know that like, might be um, no 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 okay I was thinking that was Van Damme for a second but no that is Steven Seagal hard so to hard kill. to kill I think is the one who's in a coma and then Kelly LeBrock um, wakes him up from his uh, whatever his his slumber and I remember that part because uh, I would just goof on that movie all the time and there's a part where a senator I guess had set him up to get killed because he knew something I, I'm trying to think if it's either above the law or hard to kill those are like very interchangeable movies but there's a part mm-hmm. where with a senator on television, so Steven Seagal's up, he's woken up from his, his coma, and he's looking at the TV, and the guy on the TV screen is a senator who had him, you know, try to get killed, and he says, I'll take them to the, I'll take them at the bank, I'll take them to the bank, or something like that, <laughs> and then right? Steven Seagal, like, whispers and goes, I'll see you at the bank, the blood bank, and I was, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, brother, anyway, so anyway, so yeah, he was a bad guy inside in that Under Siege movie, where, which had Seagal inside of a you know fighting on on a on a cruise on a, on, a, on like a, a naval boat or something like that. It was fucking awesome, and it had Tommy Lee Jones uh, get killed with a knife through the forehead. So I mean, that movie is great. Anyway, so right. Gary Busey is in this film at the very beginning. You know, there's trouble in this movie because uh, I, I won't even. That's not even the worst part of this movie. Like, like the the no, cinema it's not. T- no, no. I'll I'll say what it, the worst part of this film is to me. Uh, everything in this movie is horrible. There's just something that's worse to me. Anyway, um, so Gary, okay. the movie starts out with like a donut shop or no, some sort of diner at the beginning of the film, right? It's like a diner. Yeah. Yeah. You can get this movie on Hulu. So this is why I'm staying with Netflix, even though it's not my account. Stands. Anyway, so there's a restaurant called Cadillac Jacks at the beginning, and it was so funny because there's a shot of uh, American Apparel in the film, but there's something covering the A, so I guess they had the right to show it or something. 
Anyway, okay. so you see the front of this diner. This is something that bothered me already from the beginning of it. Uh, you hear a woman scream, right? You see the outside of the diner, uh, and then you hear this woman scream. Then it cuts to Gary Busey shooting off camera, and then you see a <laughs> dead woman like she's lying on the you know on the counter. You know, where you order food and stuff. And the yeah, woman, I know what the counter is. The woman is, fa- uh, the woman is facing us with her head, the forehead blown out. But Gary uh-huh. Busey's on the other side of the room, and I don't understand. Maybe it ricocheted. Maybe did he, he shoot her through the back of the head and exit through a forehead, or did he? No, shoot no, no. Her in he shot. He shot a mirror, and it bounced off <laughs> the did, mirror. He into did gun. He, did he do gun kata from Equilibrium, where he shot in a different direction and just hit? Oh no, I'm thinking of Wanted, when they can shoot bullets and it actually, uh, the bullet would Bends. fly and bend in the air. Anyway, yeah, so, he did that. So Gary Abusey is uh, apparently a crazy person. What was his name? I, I kept thinking Millard Fillmore. Uh, but that's uh, like a Millard Findelmeyer. <laughs> what do you think his his religion was? Millard Findelmeyer. It sounds it sounds like he would be like Amish or something. Okay, yeah, that does sound right. Like he he sits around and like spools like gold and stuff like that. He just spins gold and stuff like that. Anyway, yeah. so there's a family inside this restaurant. The uh. An absolutely bizarre scene because it seems like uh, <laughs> they're not even like particularly scared. I love how like the dad gets killed and they don't like scream. There's in no distress. reaction. Millard. Okay, so he's playing Millard, obviously a psychopath, uh, and Millard is. Uh, he doesn't seem like he's going and shooting people that are not talking. Do you know what I mean? Like he shot that woman in the head because she screamed. That makes sense. Okay, because he's trying to mm-hmm. shut people up. He's looking around for money or whatever the fuck he's doing. He's in a bit. He's like in a in a nice suit too. You know what I mean? He's not like a, a crazy bum. He's not like how uh, maybe he just had a bad day at work. Because this movie is like a, a cheap knockoff of Child's Play. Do you know? And yeah, totally. You know, totally. in a way where it's like a celebrity playing this sort of. Uh, I don't think um, the guy who played. Uh, um, yeah, he Brad Chucky Dorf was, was not yeah, famous yeah, at that time. I know. I know one of our listeners is going to fucking go nuts because I didn't know Brad Dorf's name offhand. Uh, but hello mm. to you. She knows who she is. But, uh, yeah, so Gary oh. Busey, um, <laughs> he's he's playing Millard. And, and then this guy gets up, this old man. He's, like, telling him, compelling him, trying to compel him to leave, right? Why? Mm-hmm. Just stay in the fucking chair. You know what he, and you know what he says, like, 20 times or something? That's he's the like, son. Could That's you put the down son. the gun, please? That's the Can you put down the gun, it, yeah. please? They, he kills oh, the God. father, and then the son gets up, and he says, put the gun... Down. It almost seems like they were, like, recording the acting, like, his acting class. He kind of you know, looks like the guy who plays Captain America, like a very oh, young Steve person. Rogers, I mean, um, Chris, uh, Chris, whatever his name is. Um, yeah. Anyway, so he get the brother gets killed, so he gets stabbed to death. And Gary Abusey is just there, like, uh, <laughs> pontificating. And the, the main character actress... Uh, I mean, sorry, the main actress steps up. Her name is Sarah... Was it Sarah? No, no. Yeah. Yeah, Sarah Lee. So, yeah, Because obviously it's supposed to be a play on Sarah Lee the Cookie, like I made the joke earlier. And uh, she gets up. At, it's This is supposed to be two years in the past. And maybe, I don't know what age she's supposed to be. I think they're obviously trying to make her look younger. Because she has, like, the mm-hmm. doll, the girl, the, the dolly hair style and stuff like that. But she has such an, a massive chest. And this is not for me to insult this actress. It's funny no, because I remember in the sixth grade I saw a girl with like massive. Chest I know, but I think like, she's playing younger than she's supposed to be. I think it's only a two year difference, and I don't know what age she's supposed to be playing. Honestly, maybe she's playing twenty in the film, and then she's supposed to be seventeen or something, or right. eighteen. But it just doesn't make any sense because she's obviously they're de aging her, but her body type is a full woman. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, what the hell is going yeah. on? Anyway, so uh, Robin Sidney playing Sarah Lee gets up, and then he wants to kill her, but then the cops come, and he, obviously he gets arrested off camera. And the, the film fast-forwards two years uh, into the present uh, of 2000. Uh, Ugh, it's like the worst acting, 2005. actually. Like, okay. that whole scene made me cringe when he keeps asking And it was so funny, because while, while watching this film, I was like, okay, so, you know, I was like, not, I was like none of the actors are really poor actors but then like you yeah, watch the yeah, movie yeah no but then when when i watched the movie continue i was like yeah they're all pretty bad actors in this movie to me obviously sarah like, is like okay i'll get to this okay so i'll get to this uh what the worst thing for me was is that the movie has an unending soundtrack it the music does not stop through the film it, it continues <laughs> from beginning to the end of the fucking movie and it's like 
It's like weird Pee Wee Herman music, <laughs> like incidental music. Like if Pee Wee's walking to his his fridge from the living room, it's like right. do do honk honk do 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 wonk wonk. And I was like, <laughs> what is this? Like, like it's not like like obviously they have yeah. Weird, you're you're right. Actually, it is pretty annoying. And it's like shitty. You know, it's a you know it's a full moon movie because there's a guy playing a fucking keyboard like. I bet you what they do is they they tell the who's this who's the guy that does the soundtrack. He's probably playing it. He's probably playing it on scene. Like they probably <laughs> just like had him sitting in the back. Like it's not really Charles Band doesn't give a shit about the movie. He just wants the guy to release a soundtrack because uh, Charles Band wants to always be a musician, but he never had the chops for it. Wait, let me see who the <laughs> let me see. Will you talk about uh, the opening and where she works while I look for this uh, whoever's making. Okay, music for this so show. after after getting caught and. The whole family's dead. Now it like flashes forward to whenever the hell, and she is running her family's uh, bakery with her drunk alcoholic mother, who I guess you know is obviously sad because her whole family's dead. And who absolutely and, like, shoots at the rival uh, opening business, who I guess is supposed yeah, to be and, like. Yeah, and then they've got like, you know, like what are they trying to be? They're like. Well, like, who are these, like, villains supposed to sort of be... There, so there's a like, rival bakery. I, I would assume it's supposed to be something like... Why Why can't I think of this fucking cookie place? That, there's plenty of cookie places that are, like, all around Manhattan, like, in New York City that we know of. Um, right. For some reason, I can't think of the place. It's supposed to be, like, Little Debbie's or something. Yeah, but Little Debbie's is more of a business. I'm thinking more of those sort of high-end, you know, uh, croissant... Panera bread places. or something. Panera, right, Panera. There's another place that I can't think of the name of, but... Essentially, Panera. If they don't have those in the East Coast, well, or West Coast, big, we listen to them. big industry cookie wants to take over Mom and Pop <laughs> Bakery, and he and he's played by this uh, cowboy looking guy. I think Larry Cedar, who looks like a mix between um, Chris Elliott <laughs> and Charles Dance. Um, if anyone knows who Chris <laughs> Elliott is, he's the guy from um, Get a Life, and Charles Dance. Charles Dance is the guy who plays the father of Tyrion and Game of Thrones. Yeah, that, I know. This actor is. looks just like like a mix of those two, and he's. And I, I know that guy is probably a good actor, and they probably... I was thinking about it, I was like, this guy seems like he's a good actor, like... They probably... He probably had no work, and they were like, <laughs> I'll give you a dollar if you're in this movie. You gotta think about it, because, like, you think about it this way, like, Robin Sidney, who plays Sarah Lee, the main actress in the film, like... Yeah. She's... She's not horrible in the movie. Like, I don't think she's a terrible actor. She seems like she's, like like we said, she's energetic and she's personable, but all like she's her. doing, all she's doing, is being in fucking uh, full full moon movies. Like I don't know what the like. Did she kill she like probably... Charles Band's kid or something by mistake? She plays <laughs> Sarah know. Lee in five other. This character, she plays her in five other um, of these films. Oh like, really? She's in <laughs> Ginger Dead Man versus Evil Bong, Evil Bong Four Twenty, Evil I Bong. I saw one of the I Evil five. Bong movies. It was. Bad. I uh, yeah, no shit. I saw five seconds of it. I knew it was bad. She was an evil bong. Uh, the latest one, Puppet Mat. She's playing different characters. She's playing somebody in Puppet Master Axis Termination, which maybe which is a trailer. Like, which is a trailer so bad I thought it was fake. Um, and she was also maybe in, she just can't get other roles. She's also in <laughs> Killjoy Psycho Circus. <laughs> Oh, Which, there's another one now? There's like four Killjoy movies, five Killjoy movies. But the things with Killjoy, what I think they did horrible with those Killjoy movies, they moved it away from black victims to like random white people. So it's boring now. So like even black actors don't have their own. Besides obviously the good Get Out, there's like no well, real. Well, they replaced the Killjoy actor with a white guy dressed like a black guy. Right, who was worse. Remember face. that guy? Because you remember at least the original black um actor who played Killjoy was funny cuz he was like a black guy making goofy jokes and then they re- yeah. then they replaced him I think in part 2 with a white yeah, guy horrible. and it was a horrible white actor like to I this was day, like to this day I still consider it one of the worst movies I've ever seen. remember his laugh it was all like lazy that's why yeah. that's why you, there's no like black like horror franchise and then when you actually do see some black horror films they're like some of the worst fucking movies like no trust me there's bad white horror movies look at you know Killjoy movies well 
Tales but from the Hood was fucking awesome. That was good. See, because that's not a franchise. That's like a really good movie. It's an anthology because there's a, those are black directors and writers that knew what the fuck they're doing. They sometimes they'll just like yeah, but they're no. You're right though. There isn't nearly enough. There isn't. There are any like and Get Out is like you know because I don't want to see everything about fucking race relations, but that movie was perfect. You know because like yeah, obviously African American people in film are more than just race relations, but that ten, that tends to be what like white movie companies like say like oh we'll get more black people to watch movies if we see the plight of the blackness like maybe black people just want movies with their characters in it you know like you know, yeah, watch, maybe they just want to be a normal character in a movie <laughs> it's like i'm gonna watch black panther because i'm gonna sit there thinking about fucking you know economics and shit it's gonna, cause it's gonna be a cool fucking character anyway <laughs> wow we're talking about a lot of shit that's how bad this movie is there's we really nothing talk about to say else. about this so movie. that's why so this girl um sarah lee works at this obviously at this bakery um she uh, her rival is that cowboy guy who wants to buy her out he has a daughter that she went to junior high and grade school i guess grade school with um her daughter his daughter's a fucking asshole she's played by um alexa uh, alexia asshole. ailman who i thought she was okay because she was playing sort of this southern asshole but then like when she went up and saw her father get killed by a car, it was some of the worst oh, acting God, I ever saw. I cringed. I cringed. L- Lorna Dean, which I think is supposed to be Lorna Dean, Lorna Doom cookies. They're really like playing with these names, but I could be wrong. And Jimmy right. Dean is like a sausage guy, isn't he? So I'm not sure. Uh, I don't know. There's a character, the guy Ryan Locke. Like I'm obsessed because his name is. Ro- it looks like oh, that's this- Emos Cadbury, like Cadbury egg, maybe. Yeah, Amos cookies and Cadbury eggs. Come on, Amos Cadbury. Um, and his name reminded me of the swimmer Ryan Lochte, the one who got in trouble for lying about uh getting robbed in um wherever the, the oh fucking Olympics didn't he say were. like uh, he was mugged in Brazil or something? It's something like that, and then they found he was just like broing out with his two other friends being assholes and it was so funny because they paid for the damages and then they still got fucked over with their careers fuck them um Good. yeah that that guy was actually not a not a bad actor um but i mean there were some parts where he, his acting couldn't save the scenes he was in he's so not anyway, a bad actor he's, he's not, not a, a good, good actor. actor there you go uh he's like one. my level of acting you know <laughs> so uh sarah lee um is working at this she took over i guess this bakery from her father uh she didn't want to work she doesn't want to close down she has that her sidekick is that Spanish girl. Um, I just lost the name again. Anyway, Spanish girl, whatever. Uh, who's not a bad actress, <laughs> and she actually pronounced Julie. her. She pronounced her uh, Spanish correctly, which I was surprised to see in a movie. I guess this place takes place in Texas because everybody has bad um, Texas accents and um, that would southern explain accents. the way that bad guy is dressed. And plus, they mention Waco. Um, plenty of times, which is remember Waco, Texas, is where uh, that that. Um, Cult burnt up, got burnt up by the government. What was his uh, name? That guy, Waco. God damn, what's that Waco? I have Texas? no idea. I just heard about them today. Yeah, you know him. Remember that that guy who was like, he was like a second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. He would say so. He would sleep with all the girls in the cult. David Carr. Oh, oh, uh, Jim Jim Jones. No, no, David. Jim Jones was in Af- South Africa. I'm talking about here in Waco, Texas. Was uh was a what's his face uh jim i just said his name david koresh and then the government said oh yeah you got all these guns fuck you so they came in and they blew them like sky high and because of that a lot of white um power guys went nuts and they blew up like government buildings it's a whole big mess huh. anyway if you want to hear about that go listen to other podcasts on crime so See, uh learn something today. so this film has an overly complicated and unnecessary thing that has Gary Busey's mother, who apparently was a witch and was commanding his mind to uh, kill, finish his job, she, I guess she, he gets executed off screen and they have They don't even, like, out. explain this, though. Where do they explain that? They don't. They just say, well, he does say that, they do say that his mother was a witch somewhere in the film. That's all I remember. Then you see her, like, this witchy woman walking around. You don't ever, you never see her face. She sends off a box of uh, gingerbread um, ingredients to make gingerbread cookies. Some sort of, uh-huh. some sort of spread or some sort of um, particles. Counting that you put in food. on the fact that someone will get a drop of blood. Yeah, in it. here's the thing: the witch woman, she could have done that herself. She could have just done that in her house. She would have to guess. Well, that maybe they would it's take... something with the magic of the DNA that it won't work. Yeah, but it was a, a DNA of a guy who has nothing to do with any of them. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't understand right. if she cursed it and had some. She could have gotten that blood from anybody. Do you know what I mean? She could have even put it in herself. Uh, she this <laughs> this witch woman, this mother of Gary Busey. See, I'm overthinking it. 
she had to right. take a guess that somebody would take that uh, ingredients, put it inside cookie dough, and then somebody would bleed on it and then cook it. Like, wh- well, do what you think if of- they just ate it without the blood, it would have worked also? It would be better if uh, it would be funny if it was just like she made that just so they would have the shits, but she didn't expect them to bleed in it. So it actually <laughs> right, it's created just lax- it, like she just puts like uh, the laxatives in it or something. <laughs> yeah, that's all she wanted. And then when it actually brought his son back, she was like, "Oh wow." Um, but anyway, obviously she learned her lesson by the end of the film when those gingerbread men come alive at the end. So there's this other character, this uh, annoying sort of uh, milk toast guy who's I can't even think of his name. He's like a, like a wrestler character, and I knew he was gonna yeah. come back and be a wrestler at the end. The of the, ba- movie. the baker butcher, some right? Exactly. He's some thing. random guy. Seriously, as the movie was happening, I was trying to repress it. Like it was pretty bad. Yeah, so we're dealing with Sarah Lee and her attraction to um, uh, Amos, and I really didn't think. I thought all these characters would be introduced just to get killed off, and surprisingly, more characters survive than more characters die, or it was an equal amount of characters. Um, it's, yeah, it's not. It's it's just bad, and it's just directed by for a movie that's for a movie that's literally only an hour, and then like yeah. What was it like? Seven minutes of credits. Or remember, something? remember, Killjoy Two was an hour. That had a lot more stuff in it for some reason. Yeah, that was that was unbearable. No, I was gonna say for a movie that's only an hour, it's really painful. Like it's, it's fun at bad. points, but it, it was painful. Like, like the, I didn't the credits, find it. The I didn't, credits were like five minutes or something. I didn't find it horribly painful as like Killjoy was, but I felt like it was unnecessary. And I don't know if that's much worse. Do you know what I mean? Like. Yeah. Because, like, this seems like a film, like, this was, like, somebody's, like, somebody in their house could have made this. Like, if somebody owned a bakery and they said, how can we get more people at this bakery to buy stuff? It's all, let's make a tie-in horror film and people can be like, oh, cool, I'll go (laughs) eat cookies here and shit like that. Because this, like, I can't imagine Charles, do you see anywhere where the budget for this movie is? Because I can't imagine. No, I'm actually trying to look for it. I can't imagine Charles Ban, like, getting a script from these guys and then they actually, you know, because this is a film where there's a lot of stationary shots. There's no handhelds. Everything's like tripod and lights and stuff like that. And mm-hmm. like somebody thought this out for one location. It's basically four set pieces. The outside, the uh, the area that has the uh, big oven in it, the uh, mm-hmm. one of the stock rooms, and then like uh, the the main area where the, where the cash register is. That's it, and it just goes to these four places over and over for no fuck, and and the same fucking song, uh, it was a goofy music is playing throughout the whole fucking and movie. like the reactions to everything that's happening, like yeah, if like you saw a, a, a giant cookie that's like killing people or moving even, wouldn't you be scared? Like these people aren't. Like, yeah, reacting. they decide they decide to stay and try to capture the cookie to go on Jay Leno. I would have got out of there. Like, if I saw something moving by itself with its own fucking thoughts and actions, I'd be like, I'm getting out of here. Like, can a cookie really find me? I'm getting out of here. The cookie doesn't know who I am. I'll just leave. And then, and then they're like, you know, like mocking the cookie. Like, the, Amos is like, oh, what are you scared of? What, that guy? The cookie? Or whatever. Yeah, I mean, there's whatever a part. The fuck he says. There's a part where the blonde, like, bitchy daughter gets, like, the, there's time enough for the ginger dead man to actually create like a <laughs> one booby trap. He does one booby trap, and then the main guy says, "There's booby traps everywhere." So he just decides not to leave. Meanwhile, they leave right. later on in the film. There's no booby traps. Something they falls, gave him and a then, long time. To and they couldn't even that. come He's... up a good. They couldn't even come up with a good. Um, uh, who's what's that that phrase they always use when there's like overcomplicated booby traps? Um, I forget that what? phrase that they use. Like you know when they like if a a, sh- a shoe will hit a marble and then the marble goes on. Like, oh oh oh! What's that I actually phrase? I know exactly what it is. I just can't think. Like anyway, so sense. yeah, so so they they set it up like it was some huge complicated like um, trap because something falls off the ceiling and then the blonde girl looks and it cuts back to the the main couple in the film and then she it cuts back to her with a knife in her forehead and you don't see what the mechanism was that caused it. So it's Rube like Goldberg what, machine. Rube Goldberg, right? I actually like named a drawing after one of those. So it's like, what what is going on in this movie? It's just like, and then can a knife cut your finger like that? No, you could saw off a finger. It doesn't just fucking cut with a swipe like that. Especially a baker's knife. Are you joking? With me? <laughs> I mean, it's bad for me trying to think. Of Maybe it was using logic. um like a box cutter though. 
I got the only part that I actually laughed was when the gingerbread man is like obviously they told Gary Busey they're like look just curse at this rat on screen and then that's he was oh, yeah. wasn't there that's the only funny part and as for the gingerbread man look himself I thought I was gonna hate it but I don't hate it I thought it was pretty well this is a good thing about Charles Band like he knows they know how to make their um, character designs because it wasn't poor right. looking I obviously I would rather. If it was like this, is, if they had the money, they would obviously have done CGI. I would have rather seen stop motion. No, that would have been even worse. Yeah, probably you're right. At this time, yeah, but I uh, like I I like the stop animation stuff. Stop motion animation they did like in the uh, original Puppet Master, but for some reason now they can't afford it. Uh, it makes me yeah, wonder like how much. I don't money. understand why you think Puppet Master is a bad movie. I still don't get why you think that. It's, it's a bad great. movie because uh, I saw it and I saw how what they wrote <laughs> and it was terrible. Okay, listen, everybody, disregard him. Okay, it's a good it's, movie. it's an okay film. Okay, do you feel better okay, now? Okay, co- okay, we could compromise on that. Thank you. Oy vey. I was trying to find a way that a word that remember okay with horrible, but I couldn't. Um, it's not a horrible <laughs> movie. Okay, F- fine enough. Anyway, so this movie is just like, and, and there's unnecessary scenes where the main guy is trying to, you know, flirt with the main girl, and you know where it's going. And I would actually look away and do other stuff while that was happening because it was so fucking boring. And they did yeah. do something which was all right, where the um, where the butcher baker guy gets possessed by Gary Busey at the end for like a one of the worst fight scenes at the end of the film. Um, his makeup was good though when he was possessed by the ginger man. Um, but why was I, the whole plot point of him being the butcher baker is so stupid? I yeah, mean, I don't know why I'm. I don't know why I'm questioning. <laughs> I don't know why I'm trying to pick it apart. You know, like Charles Band read this and said, "This is good. I'm going to direct this." You know, what I mean? it's like <laughs> why. He? Did he, or did he go into it thinking, this is so stupid, let's make it? <laughs> yeah, I know I can sell toys with this shit, because <laughs> if, if they're able to, like, like when I first heard Robert Rodriguez was going to have his channel, um, uh, El, El Rey, I was like, yeah. oh, shit, because, I, you know, I had seen, I, I fallen out of favor of liking Robert Rodriguez's films, because it seems like he's progressively gotten worse with his movies. Then I watched El Rey Network, and he was like, you know what? These, he's got a good channel. Like, there's cool, like, retro... Eight, like, he'll have, like, on the 4th of July, all they showed were Godzilla movies. Even if you don't like Godzilla movies, there's a channel showing Godzilla movies, you know, from the 2000s, <laughs> which is cool. Right. You know, that's cool, and they show kung fu movies and shit like that. Like, cool stuff that, if you're into weird genre and horror films, like, they put that on. And then I know Charles Band has like uh, on-demand full moon movies, and I'm like, no. There's a no I'm, way. I'm reading a really funny review. I'd rather watch the WWE has its own channel. I, I don't like wrestling. I'll no, watch that no, shit before. Everything I watch they've made movie. is horrible. <laughs> what WWE wrestling? The le- the Leprechaun movie. Oh my god. Oh, uh, that was pretty bad. Look, like, that was one movie. That's not worse than all the Full House full uh, moon movies together. Come on, that's pretty bad. Um. Yeah, I, at least no. But full moon movies don't take themselves so seriously. The WWE is trying to be like badass. Well, that's true. What, what was that movie? We gotta see that movie. The movie where they it had, was the Leprechaun Origins. I know that Horrible. that was that was an abomination. That was atrocious. This is an atrocious. I couldn't movie. believe how bad but, uh, that was. They, they I know they produced a couple <laughs> movies. They did a movie with. Um, do you remember who uh, Kane was? Who was supposed to be the Undertaker's brother? He made a movie called See No Evil or some shit like that, where he was like a oh, killing God. machine. And, my fr- and this guy that I knew who saw it would say that there were scenes where the camera was trying to be creepy, like to set a, f- a mood of the film, like uh-huh. being scary. And then there would just be s- like zoom ins and close ups of rats for no reason, like a rat eating something. And I'm like, what the hell is so scary about a rat eating? Like, obviously, I would, I'm a bitch because I would be scared of a rat in my house. But, uh, oh yeah, I'm not a bitch. Uh, accommodations, Holiday Inn. Wow, <laughs> that's in the credits. That's pretty cool. Um, listen, I, I, what, what are good stuff for this film? <laughs> Um, it was kind of funny. In what way? <laughs> like, in being not funny. Oh, I see. Yeah, uh, I, I gotta say that. <laughs> I mean, come on. The fact that he asks Gary Busey literally, like, four times in a row, can you put the gun down, please? Can you put the gun down, please? That felt like, it, to me, that scene looked like it was a fucking acting exercise. It made no sense, that scene. I had no I had no clue why he was doing that. Could you put it down? Could you put it down? Could no, you that, put it down? Could you put it down? But that's what makes it funny. It's very strange. What did you think of Gary Busey's performance? I, I like Gary Busey, but he was, he was amazing. He's wasted in this film. He I I would have rather seen him playing like a, a crazy like 
psychopath guy just shooting at people. Like, the Ginger Dead stuff, it doesn't make any fucking s- Obviously, the whole movie doesn't make any sense, but, like... <laughs> If you just if they had given him ten more dollars, he could have just been that character throughout the whole film. You know, I don't know how much. They, I'm sure they probably gave him a thousand dollars or something for you ten minutes of work. <laughs> for ten minutes of work, and then probably they recorded his voiceovers within two hours because he didn't say a lot <laughs> in this movie. Uh, he yeah. cursed at a rat and he just said other dumb shit. Um, I, there's not someone a whore. Yeah, you know what I mean. It's like, like oh man, the puppeteering is not. That's the thing. Like when you see characters that are like monsters that are puppeteered, there's good puppeteering. Let's say uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Master. Turtles from two, 1990. Uh, or Dark and then, Crystal. And then this is puppeteering, where it's obviously just somebody's hand up a puppet's ass, and it's really poorly <laughs> done. Like, come on, I I don't know. Like, it, it just it, I don't know. I, there's there's a bunch of fucking Ginger Dead Man movies. I don't know if he continues playing the character. Do in all you those think movies. we should review? There's all even of comic them? book movies. I no. I I'll stop doing the show if we do that. Um, <laughs> I'll stop doing do any more fucking full hot, full moon movies. Nah, I'll probably <laughs> suffer anyway. But uh, there's a couple of uh, Ginger Dead Man movies, and I remember I think I was watching Ginger Man Dead like some some, and it started out with him on a beach, and it was gotta be one of the worst green screen effects I've seen of like him at the beach, and he's uh-huh. drinking like some sort of fruity j- drink, and there's these three topless women, a white woman, an Asian woman, and a black woman standing around him and fanning him or giving him sun. I was like that. Uh, why? What? What's Charles Band smoking? Like what's going on? I don't know. I think he's just. I think he is aware that he's horrible and he's just trying to make money now. Yeah. Well, yeah. And and you know what? Ho- people like horror fans are so like um like real horror fans. I, I don't yeah. like I like I don't know how how to explain this. Like I think I'm a horror fan. Obviously, I'm not a horror mm-hmm. fan where I'll like every horror movie that comes out because I'm not retarded. Uh, excuse me. I'm not a mm-hmm. uh, you know crazy person. Like you're a horror fan, right? You and I are both yeah. horror fans. We love the genre. I would, con- I would consider myself a horror fan. I yeah. consider myself a horror fan, obviously. And we've been doing this show enough that I think people realize we'll watch horror films. But I'm sure there's people out there that you know are die ha- diehard horror films, where horror fans that well they'll watch any horror film and be like, oh man, I can't wait to see the next one of this. You know, I, I can't wait to see Hatchet right. Twelve. I can't wait to see Ginger Man, Ginger Dead Man Fifty Six, or Puppet Master no. Goes to Africa. I'm uh, not that kind. Pinhead ninety six. <laughs> you know Puppet all Master that shit. Goes to Africa is that real? Like they they do that because they think like the horror genre is gonna disappear if they don't watch it, which is you know it's obviously something that could happen because if you watch everything now, it's just blockbusters. Well, you know, films, if these Marvel movies, movies disappeared, I don't think it would be that big a deal. <laughs> But um, and the thing is, people love the stuff enough that they'll make it regardless. They'll make it in the house, you know. They'll do whatever they can. But these, this is a shit movie. Uh, this is a bad movie. Like, it, <laughs> somebody could have made like the the premise itself is goofy enough that you can do something with it. You know, it's a ginger dead man. It's like such a. They even have comic book series. You can do something with it. But this is like an Clearly, hour. This like, is an hour of fucking just around. Decompose? Like, even if they say that he killed them or whatever, and now he's free, like, he would just decompose. He's right. He's a cookie. The, the, uh, I think a better ending is if that Do guy... Do you think that mold would eat him and then that would, <laughs> like, be inhaled by people? I think a, a better ending is if that guy was possessed by the ginger dead man, you know, when he ate him. Uh-huh. And then eventually the guy had to take a shit, and then he shot out the ginger dead man. And then he was he cool. wasn't possessed again, so they didn't have to put him in a fucking oven like a Nazi and shit like that. Um, yeah, they killed him for no reason. So the guy music is by Roger Ballinger. So there you go. And uh, cinemato- cinematography probably, by Keith J. I'm Dugan. telling you, that guy was sitting there with a Casio keyboard <laughs> in the background. I'm telling you, playing. Charles Charles Band gives him the movie without music on it, and he goes, "Just play for an hour and ten minutes." And he's like, "Okay." Honk <laughs> honk. It's like the music is really stupid, and I can tell you this: I bet you that you can take the music <laughs> off of this and put it on the exact same hour-long music that he's done, and put it on any of his other fucking evil bong chicken <laughs> shit fuck movies that he makes these ginger dead movies it's the same and nobody would notice because they're all shit all right very yeah. good uh i give this movie a um i was gonna give it a two i'll give it a, a, a zero no um a negative two a negative three <laughs> out of uh ten see i'll be nice negative two out of ten 
<laughs> um, oh brother. <laughs> do 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 do. Hong Kong, do 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 do. Me me, what a buck buck ma. Hong Kong, do 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 do. All right, is that so? That's your rating. Well, no, and actually, a, a chopped finger that actually has a blood trail to it, even though that's not scientifically possible. <laughs> two okay. out of t- negative two out of ten uh, blood finger, uh, blood with a blood trail to it. A finger with a blood trail. Go ahead. Okay, I'm gonna give this, and you know what? Actually, there was a point where that girl Sarah's acting was good enough that I actually felt bad for her. Yeah, for she's real. A, she's a good actor. She's fine. She's stuck yeah, in these fucking full moon movies, but what can you do? She definitely. You gotta make a living somehow. Over that, she's definitely better than the full moon genre. Yes. Whatever. Um, I'm gonna give this movie a a three <laughs> out of out of. <laughs> Fourteen point six. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> anyway, That's a new one. Three out of fourteen point six. Um, seeing your dad get killed and kind of just being a little bit upset and saying, "Could you put the gun down, please? <laughs> Could you put that gun down, please?" <laughs> Five <laughs> times. <laughs> With that, Danny, what's the final word? Oh, we're going to watch all of the Ginger Dead Man series, mm. folks.